Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. So as you can see today, we are going to be painting a gnome, a reading gnome. Um, and we have a little theme going on. So we're going to be doing this one on YouTube. And then if you're part of my studio crew, you can get this outline in the studio crew. And also our next lesson in the studio crew classroom is going to be this reading gnome, uh, where we are gonna do a drawing tutorial as well as have the outline available and do the painting tutorial of this uh, composition, this piece here. So, but we're gonna focus on this reading gnome. Why reading gnomes? Why gnomes with books? Well, books are super fun to paint for sure, um, especially a nice bookcase like we saw in the other one. Uh, but also I am a big reader and it's the new year and I absolutely love, I'm just gonna clean out my palette a little bit uh, while we get ready, but I love to read. I read lots and lots of books each year. And the other thing I love to do is I love to listen to books. So often when I'm painting, not teaching painting, but painting for myself, for my own work, I pop on an audiobook um, and listen to tons of books each year. So my goal this year is 43 books. Uh, we'll see if I reach it. I think I'll reach it pretty easily. I've never actually set a goal before. But I'm also um, uh, a big Audible fan. So like I said, I listen to a lot of books as well as read a lot of books. So I have a Kindle. I read on my Kindle. I read on my phone. Uh, but I also um, listen to them through the Audible app. So if you have not been introduced to Audible before, my husband, my son, and I all share an account. And we fight over our credits each month. So I'll put a link to um, Audible, um, the Audible subscription in the comment or in the description of this video as well. Um, and you can learn more about that. If it's something that you love to listen to music, you know, I listen to music a lot when I paint as well. But if you love listening to books, not only while you paint, but for me, like whenever I have to do chores like laundry or the dishwasher, that's like the best time to, it motivates me to do my chores because I get to listen to another chapter of my book. Um, so go ahead and check that out. I'll put the link in the description if you've never done that before. But yeah, you can get the app right on your phone. Download those books. Um, you get one credit a month. I often have to buy more credits because again, we all share it and we go through a lot of Audible books each month. So check that out. Um, and you can also get Audible audiobooks through your library. So check that out as well, your local library. All right, so let's get started on our gnome. So today I have with me, um, I'm working on Arsh watercolor paper, but whatever paper you have, 100% cotton is always great if you have it. If not, work with what you've got. Um, 140 pound cold press recommended, even if it's not 100% cotton, um, it just holds up pretty well. I am going to be using my Core Paints QOR by Golden. This is my favorite palette right now, but I definitely use Winsor Newton, Cotman and Professional, as well as Daniel Smith um, and a bunch of other brands, but we don't have to go into that. Using my Core Palette, I'm gonna be using a combination of my Princeton Select Round Brushes. Uh, probably, I'm, I have a size eight now. I might bring in a size 12 later to do the background. Uh, and if I have any little details like this, I'll bring in my liner brush here. So this is a size zero. So if you have those three types of brushes, excellent. You can get away with really just doing the whole thing with a size eight or six if you need to. All right. So this gnome is a lot of fun. Um, he's so cute with this little book, kind of his face tucked down in it. We don't have to focus too much on the beard. So when the beard is challenging for you, with gnomes, but you still want to have this adorable little kind of uh, pointed cap and little nose peeking out, cover up the beard with an object. So if you saw my Valentine's gnomes, which I can link uh, here, I have Valentine's gnomes that are both in YouTube as well as in the studio crew. Um, we put big hearts in front of the gnome. So most of the beard is covered up. Uh, when you struggle with that light gray washes, you know, fix your composition so you don't have to deal with that part um, if you need to. All right, so we're gonna start, we have a striped hat. We're gonna do this as a two-tone color. So for the hat, I'm gonna actually put this in second. We're gonna do the background first, put in the two-toned hat, and then we're gonna move to the 
book and the gloves, um, finishing up with our nose and the beard area, and then any final details that we need to do. Probably this little string here, maybe, and some more definition on the hat. But let's start with the background. So the background I'm gonna be doing with just a very neutral color. I'm gonna use Payne's Gray, which already has a blue tint to it. Sorry for my light having the reflection there. Let's see if I can fix that. There we go. I think that's a little better. There's still a little reflection in there, but that's okay. We'll make it work. So I'm starting with Payne's Gray, and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of Thalo Blue. You could stick with just Payne's Gray, but I want a nice neutral background. I don't want it to be too bright and colorful, and I'm actually going to water this down quite a bit. I'm going to bring in my size 12 brush. And you could do this wet on wet. I'm gonna actually do this wet on dry, but I'm going to keep my brush moving really quickly. And I am going to continue to introduce water as well as paint. Okay, I don't want any harsh lines or edges, but I, I do want some texture. I don't want it to be completely blown out. So I do that by introducing the wet on dry, but making sure to blend out my edges pretty quickly. And then as it dries, I'll also add a little bit more texture. So again, you can pick up water, you can pick up paint. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between the two, but you can see I am moving pretty quickly, picking up water now. You can leave some of the white in the background. I'm kind of just making this very, almost like a textured wall behind this guy. Nothing specific. If you want to get super creative, you could put a bookshelf, a super like, or um, yeah, like a super full bookshelf, just cluttered with lots of books. All right, we're going to let this dry just a bit, and I will add a little bit more texture to that. So while I'm letting that dry, I'm gonna pull out some more Payne's Gray, a little more Thalo Blue, and make a slightly darker color. See that? So now we are kind of wet on wet. Because I'm working on 100% cotton, it has dried a little bit, um, but I still have a lot of time to work with it. We're at a nice glossy sheen here. Not super wet and puddling the Paint isn't traveling super fast. You can see when I put it on the paper, but kind of have an even dampness all around. Okay, I'm gonna let that completely dry. Um, you definitely have to let that background dry before you start working on the hat, or as you start painting this, you're going to get funky spots um, that will bleed into it in the edges. So if you have a heat tool, go ahead and pull that out. I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry this quickly and then come back um, to start on our hat. All right, we're back and our background is completely dry. Oh, this is a little damp down here. So, but that's okay. Nowhere near where we're painting. Um, I'm going to switch over to my slightly smaller brush, my size eight. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do a green, um, color, two-tone color on here. So both the stripes are going to be green, but one's going to be a really light green and one is going to be a darker green. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out a little sap green here. I don't really want sap green as the final color. So to my sap green, I think I'm gonna add a little phthalo blue, just to cool this down a little bit. Now, if you already have a cooler green color, you can just start with that, but this is what I have in my palette. All right, and then I'm gonna water this down quite a bit. So I have this nice light color. And what I'm gonna do is actually paint this light color over the whole hat. And I am gonna give this a little light directionality just to give some shape and form to the hat. So you could put your light source over here, you could put it over any side you want you can put it straight on and that way when a light is straight on the both sides are curving away so they would both be a little darker 
So I'm gonna take this lighter color and I'm gonna darken this one side here just a little bit. So this is kind of forming our base. I'm gonna come up here into the little tip. And then once this dries, what we'll do is we'll go and make a much darker green and put in our stripes. We'll still continue to favor this side with darker pigment when we put in the stripes so it kind of continues to sell this shape of the hat that it has shape and form. There we go, just blend that out a little bit more. All right, so again, we have to let that first layer dry before we put on the second layer, and then we will um, add the stripes. So let's, while we wait for that to dry, instead of focusing, or instead of pausing it and drying it with a hand tool, we're just gonna let it dry naturally while we work on another section that's kind of nowhere near um, this part. So what we're gonna do for that is the book. And I'm gonna do the book in um, kind of reddish, orangish colors. So the first thing I'm gonna actually do, see this little spot in here and this spot here? So these are just meant to represent like an actual book might have like text on the back or like a title on the front. We're not gonna actually hand write anything in there. We're just gonna create a different color for those spaces. I'm gonna actually take some raw sienna over here. So this yellowish color. Some raw sienna. And I'm gonna take that and I'm just going to put a wash of this over the whole book jacket here. Is that right, book jacket? Well, I guess so, if it had a thing over it, but just the back of the book, you know what I mean. You hear what I'm saying, right? All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now this isn't gonna be the final color of my book, but it is gonna be the color of those little cutout areas. I'm gonna be adding red to the rest of the book. And you can see here, I have this section that's gonna stay white, and those are the actual pages of the book. We'll add some shadow um, or definition to them at the end. If you wanna go over the spine, you could. You could leave this blank where this is gonna be a darker, slightly darker red color when we're done, but. There we go. All right, again, another thing that we have to let dry, but while we let that dry, let's go in and do um, these sleeves here. It's, a, it's dry around the glove on this side. We'll let that dry over there. So the sleeves have openings in them, but so they're deep in shadow. We're looking into the opening of the sleeve. So let's get, I'm just gonna get some Payne's Gray and this sleeve, this fabric, I guess, will make it the same color as the hat. So I'm gonna pick up some of that green and mix it with the Payne's Gray, just to give me a darker color. And so this is the inside of the sleeve. And you can see I have a little bleeding right there because I wasn't super patient trying to make this not super boring for you to watch. I'm just gonna blend that out with my brush and not worry too much about it. All right, so going to this side, this side is a little drier, so I should have a little less trouble with it. Paint's gray, green, little phthalo. Okay, so we have this dark green color. Do, do, do inside the sleeve. Okay, and you can see I have some white around the edges still. We're gonna make that a lighter green when that, all of that dries and that's gonna be kind of the, out, the outer edge of the sleeve. All right, this is getting very close. I am gonna hit it with a heat tool so we can continue on um, and start to put in the stripes. So pause for drying and then come on back and we'll do the stripes on the hat. Do the book second, um, cause that will hopefully be dry by then. And then tackle our mittens, our nose, and our little bit of beard that's sticking out. All right, so 
we are going to tackle these stripes and the thing you have to notice so on my stripes i have the hat and then the stripes are slightly thinner than the bands between the stripes okay you could make yours perfectly even so the bands and the stripes are exactly evenly distributed but what you do have to decide is do you want the darker color to be the actual fabric of the base of the hat and then the stripes to be lighter or vice versa the stripes to be darker on top of a lighter color fabric whichever you decide is totally fine i'm going to put the darker color in the larger areas between the stripes and the stripes are going to be the lighter color um so i'm going to mix up some of that same dark green the Payne's gray a little phthalo blue and sap green to make this kind of dark forest green color. Okay, you see that? It looks super dark on there. And the what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the left-hand side here. And work my way across. And you know, about halfway across, I'm gonna rinse my brush dab it off. There's still a little paint on it, but I'm going to continue to work the color across as it stretches thinner. It gets a little lighter. I don't want it to be super, super dramatic, but I do want it to be a little lighter on the one side than the other. And of course, this color still has to be darker than that color. Okay. So again, we're doing these stripes. These are in the thicker parts in between. So at the end, the lighter sections will be the thinner stripes. So same thing here on the bottom. So this should take you a few minutes. Your book will definitely be dry by the time you're done because this takes a little concentration. So for all my readers out there, I have a question for you while we work on our stripes because I'm also in a book club, which is great because they really push me to read books that I normally wouldn't pick up. And I always love them. I always love them. They're always great. Um, but if you put me in a bookstore and said, pick a book, it, it would never be the book I would pick. Um, but in our book club, we have people who listen to the books and people who read the physical books. It's a combination of the two. I'm a big reader. Sometimes I, or I'm a big listener because I'm so busy with my hands uh, for most of the day, like I said, either painting or doing chores or running my kids here and there that I listen to a lot. Otherwise I would never get any of them done. Um, is that still considered reading a book to y'all? I know there are varying, I'm a big proponent of yes, absolutely it is. Um, especially cause I have one kiddo too, who is just a much slower reader and he comprehends just fine. He is a brilliant child. Um, but he, when he can listen to things and for me, when I can listen to things, I just absolutely think that is still part of the reading process, just a different way to process it. So do you think it's cheating? Do you think it's fair? Do you think, I'm curious to see what you guys think, but I'm a big audible audio listener. So much so that like I walk around with my headphones on like all day long. And, like my kids come home from school and they're like, oh my gosh, can you just take those out so we can talk to you? Whoops, dropping my heat tool. I am guilty of it. I'm like, just one more chapter. And they're like, um, we would like some attention too. But you know, you get engrossed in a story and I'm just like, just gotta go one more chapter. But I do like to read, I do like to read at night, like in bed, it helps put me to sleep. So sometimes I'll get a book that has something called whisper sync. So I can actually jump back and forth between listening and reading. So wherever I stop listening, it'll jump there in the pages. So that's super cool. And vice versa, if I read, a few pages and skip ahead. Then when I go back to listen, it's at the right spot. That is amazing. All 
right, we're almost done. There we go, our beautiful stripe. So you can see how this side is a little darker than this side. Now, I want you to remember, layering is a very important part of watercolor. So while I might only do one layer in this tutorial, because watching me do layer after layer after layer will be super boring and you're not actually gonna watch that. But I want you to know whenever you do a layer and you're like, oh, I love it. I see it's going in the right direction, but one more layer would really help make it pop. So after this dries, it's gonna dry even lighter. If you wanna go back and add another layer, go and add another layer. It's absolutely part of the process. And often, more often than not, it's rare that I ever finish a painting um, unless it's a tutorial where I'm only adding one layer. So basically repeating the same steps over again, but just maybe using a little less paint or really focusing on certain areas to add more pop or dy dynamic areas. All right, I don't wanna do that sleeve again because I'm going into the book. So let's go into the book. So we had our raw sienna up here. I am gonna pick up cadmium red. Uh, am I gonna pick up cadmium red or alizarin crimson? Let's do alizarin crimson. So alizarin crimson is a much cooler version of cadmium red, and I think it'll work with this palette. These are very Christmassy colors, even though Christmas is over. So you can do any color combination. You can make his hat blue, his hat red, his hat purple, turquoise, whatever you want it to be, and different color for the book, but. All right, so we have this alizarin crimson and we're gonna start on this side. So the whole book is facing us. There's not gonna be any real light part, but I do want it to be interesting and just not a flat wash. I know we'll have our little cutout areas, but as I'm doing this, I'm just going to leave some spots a little lighter and that just comes from rinsing my brush out, playing with spreading out the paint and the pigment. So I put it on really wet. And then I'm going to just let some of that yellow ochre, nope, it wasn't yellow ochre, it was burnt sienna. Just letting little bits of it kind of shine through a little bit more I'm gonna drop in a little bit of color in some areas. Definitely around like the title area here. I'm just gonna let that dry. I just don't want it to be an even wash, okay? I mean, you could want it to be an even wash, that's fine. Uh, but I just want it to have a little interesting texture. So this part of the book is just gonna be this border outline. I'm gonna kind of leave the back that, that um, yellow color. Continues down here. Skipping over my gloves, those are gonna be a darker, I think like a blue, like a navy blue color. All right, and then we're gonna do the spine. Go up the spine. And the spine, I'm definitely gonna darken the edges where the creases of the book are opening up, but I'm gonna wait for that to dry a little bit to add that in. Otherwise, it's just gonna bleed out. All right. My border on this side is a little, it's a little wonky. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit. So, boop, boop, boop. we go. I went a little wide over top of it. His glove is like masking a lot of it, but that's okay. All right, we're going to let that dry. We're going to put in the gloves shortly. Um, we can go up here. Let's put in our little tassel. So I'm going to take some of my dark green. And that tassel just comes right from the top using the very tip of my brush. Now I said I was gonna use a liner brush for this. I lied. Okay, look, I even let spots skip. If I go back, I wanna be very careful that I'm not like overcompensating and making it really thick. 
And then the little tassel is just going to be a couple of little wisps. There we go. And just, I'm just reinforcing these ones right at the top here because I feel like I didn't make them as dark before and they were getting lost. All right, I think our red book is pretty dry. I'm gonna take some of my paints gray, trying to stick with simple colors here as best I can. And I'm just gonna add a little shadow to this spine. It's still a little damp, okay? And I'm just going to take my brush with clean water And then take some of that red again. Go right over the spine. Let that dry, okay? This is one of those areas that I would definitely revisit to add more um, structure to it, to really make those lines pop. Might even add on this, you could add um, ink if you wanted to with like a micron pen could be very cool all right so what else do we have to do we have to do our nose and our beard and our pages and our mittens oh and the outsides here we can do that so the outsides of our robe here we're going to do that in that light color again so sap green a little phthalo blue and a lot of water so i'm going to do that in that lighter green color and just fill in this section. Just giving the appearance of some additional fabric. It's a different color than that dark area in the middle. And then let's get to our nose. So the nose is mixing of a skin or flesh tone. Um, I've done other videos on mixing flesh tones. I'm gonna to do it really quickly here, but basically I, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I am going to do it using the colors we're already using. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of this alizarin crimson because it was way too much for mixing a skin tone. So I had alizarin crimson and there was a little um, Burnt sienna still in there. I just, or not burnt sienna, raw sienna still in there. I'm adding a little bit more raw sienna to this alizarin crimson and just watering it way down. So that combination is a great one. Um, alizarin crimson has a lot of blue in it already. So it helps to kind of neutralize some of those colors. You don't have to use an additional blue. I am going to find my needed eraser. Hold on, here we go. And I'm going to, I wanna need a little bit of this, lighten up this nose a little bit, just cause this is, I didn't lighten up the rest of my drawing. I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing, but this is the one area that, oh, and I pulled <laughs> some red pigment on there, perfect. Don't do that, lighten your nose first. All right, so I'm just gonna take this light color. You can see it's pretty light. I'm gonna go around the edge, around the top, almost like a sideways D here, okay? So leaving the center pretty white. And I'm just gonna take a clean brush with just a little bit of dampness on it and just dampen the center. So not a big droplet of water, just a little dampness. I'm even wiping my brush off and I'm just gonna let it sit and do its thing, okay, and dry. Let's work on the mittens. Those I'm just gonna do with that Payne's Gray and Phthalo Blue Navy combination that we did in the background, except I'm just not gonna water it down. And we're just gonna do the mittens here. And again, if you wanna give them shape and form, Leave some area a little bit lighter than the other. I'm gonna go back and do that. Rinse my brush off. 
just towards the top. I'm making it a little bit lighter, a little darker towards the bottom. This side, I got to pull out a little color because I got a little too overzealous. There we go. This one needs a little bit more. It's a little too light. There we go. All right, let those dry. Letting our nose dry. For our white pages, I am going to take this color again, water it way, way down. Actually take a little more Payne's Gray. I want this to be a little more neutral, not as blue. Water it way, way down. I'm putting big sopping drops of water on there and I'm just gonna pick up from this really watery area and I'm just gonna paint in You could do a more brown color here, like old, old kind of tea stained colored pages. But I just want to add a little color there. I just don't want it to be the perfect white of the of the paper. I can leave white spots poking through for sure. You can go in again with that ink pen and add little detailed lines, just a couple. Very sketchy, very thin. I'm adding a little bit more towards the center here where the pages come together and would be denser, would have kind of a darker shadow. There we go. So I'm going to hit this with a heat tool to get it nice and dry and we're going to finish up with our beard and then talk about what other things you can do if you want to add additional details. All right, finishing our little gnome out, we're going to take some Payne's Gray, really. Get rid of this blue, we don't need all of you. Hold on, hold please. Let's get rid of some of that, it's too much. Payne's Gray, lots of water. All right, so for our beard, it's the same as what we do before. We're just adding some shadows around the nose and a few little lines, but it's really almost all of the space. You're just letting a little white kind of poke through so you can tell that there's something that it continues on down below this. And then I'm also going to go back into my alizarin crimson. We lost some of this here. I'm just taking alizarin crimson and putting it in that crease there. I'm gonna go around these edges. Again, I'm just creating some textured interest by just doing another layer on the top, but not like filling the whole thing in. This is where you can be a little creative. Kind of keeping it darker towards the spine. Let's do a little alizarin crimson. Oop, that's a lot of Payne's Gray. There we go, that's a little better. Do the spine again. So not only did I put a dark part there, but you can see I left some little highlights. Oop. Sorry about that. And then these yellows are a little bright for me, so I'm gonna take my raw umber, nope, not raw umber, raw sienna, and a little of my paint gray. I don't wanna introduce like a whole new set of colors. All right, so I've made this really kind of muddy color, but I'm just going to Add, just going back and forth with some little lines, like adding some suggestion of text. I don't love that, so I'm going to blend it out a little bit. So we're just bringing down the color. And see that the tone, still letting it peek through, 
but just bringing the um, the contrast down a little bit between this and the red. I thought it was a little too bright. It was a little distracting. Same thing over here. Again, leaving some suggestion of texture. That could be seen as like, oh, that's, that's writing on the back of that. I mean, it doesn't look like writing, but it's just like telling our brains, like there's something there that is like in line format and lines of things on books tend to be text. All right, I think we're close to done. If you want to add a tiny little bit of, I'm going to add this red. I'm just mixing my, I had this Alizarin Crimson with uh, Payne's Gray and this Burnt Sienna, not Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna. Mix them together to make this kind of mauve color. Uh, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that under the brim of the hat on the nose, kind of right at the base to create a shadow. It looks super dark right now. It is gonna dry lighter. I'm just gonna add a little bit of blending water to it. And blend it right out. There we go. It is gonna dry lighter for sure, but I don't wanna lose the highlight on the nose. I want it to really look like it's kind of popping out at you. All right, there we go. So you could definitely go back and add another layer to the hat, more texture to the background. You could um, get more detailed with the texture on the book for sure. That's up to you. But this is our gnome, our reading gnome. I wonder what he's reading. What are some of your favorite books out there? Any suggestions? You can always add them to my book list. I'm on Goodreads, keeping a list, a running list this year like I've never done before. I'm very excited about it. So for those of you who are also big readers, happy reading, happy painting, happy listening. If you're an audible listener or an audio listener, um, thank you so much. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description uh, for all of our supplies and materials, as well as links to the studio crew. If you want to learn how to draw and paint this little guy here. Our other reading gnome, go ahead and check out my studio crew, even if you just join for one month, um, and then cancel your subscription after you get access to all of the downloads, outlines, and videos. All right, take care, everyone. Can't wait to see you for the next video.